Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Just a couple of announcements to remind you of our rice packing, um, rice meal packaging coming up uh, that Sunday, May 21st, immediately following church. Still looking for volunteers to help with that project. Uh, we don't have the sign-up sheet out just now. It'll be up after service and out in the uh, fellowship hall where you, can, where you can locate it. We have a really unique opportunity here coming in our church. Uh, this is the story of our own Helga Bob, who is sitting, I'm sure, over here somewhere. But there she is, right in the middle. And the, if you know anything about Helga Bob's family story, it's unique and very interesting. And so much so that a book has been written called Hunting, Hunting Freedom, and it's a spelling on the family name, which is Hunt. And it is the story of what happened to their family in, during the late part of World War II in the aftermath and how they escaped, and it's Western Germany, just in case there was a little typo in there, but it's Western Germany, uh, and the, the story is incredible. We're gonna be ordering here at the church about a half dozen copies. We'll have them available in a couple of weeks at the most, probably sooner, for anybody who would like to buy one or borrow one, and they'll be available for you. Uh, you can also get them on Amazon, and, and note the spelling, because that's important. And then we hope that David uh, Walker can be with us here sometime in the future to the one who wrote this book for the family. It's, it's Helga's nephew, and, and hopefully he can be with us to, to be the, to sign books maybe, uh, to talk about them. You can meet the author. We're, we're looking forward to that. It's an incredible story. It really is well worth your reading. And you can always come and ask Helga uh, <laughs> about any of the, the other parts of the story, and I'm sure she'd share it with you. So that's coming up. We'll have those very shortly. And we just wanted to make you aware of that. Want to remind you of the rummage sale. Please note the information about that when that takes place. So that, you know, if you're bringing things, we do not need any more clothing. Thank you very much. We have lots of clothing. But we do, might do need some other items to round out what we have left over from uh, Apple Bazaar. So you can talk to Nancy Ziegelbauer about that. Uh, for If you'd like to volunteer, we could use some help with that as well. Ken is going to tell us about something coming up with the United Methodist Men. Yes, we have a United Methodist Men's meeting tomorrow night, Monday, 6 o'clock here at the church. It's going to be a picnic, but it's going to be an indoor picnic, so don't worry about the weather. We'll brats and burgers and some things and um, have fun together. And Mark Holy is going to give us the next chapter of our education on fishing here in Door County and around the state of Wisconsin. He did a program uh, around uh, January sometime, and then we had a DNR guy last month, and Mark is back. And these are all professional people who know their business because they uh, get paid for watching fish and taking care of them. And so we hear all about this good stuff. So all men are invited. So come on tomorrow night here to the church to uh, join us for the, it's kind of like the last meeting of the season. It's another little plug for the hymn sing at the, uh, Friends Church this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Uh, they sing lots of hymns and they have a really good pianist that, accompany, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that accompanies them. So you want to come and uh, check it out and enjoy hymn singing. And now a word from God. morning. I'm standing behind the podium in case somebody wants to throw something and can duck behind it. <laughs> I, uh, we're learning. I'm learning. Um, this is about doing the survey and we're running into interesting comments and issues that we're dealing with. Uh, the most important thing is the survey is designed <laughs> to listen to you. You don't have to be a member of the church. If you're a friend of the church, you come frequently or whatever. <clears throat> we need to hear from you as we go on with the next strategic plan as to the direction we need to go. And so that's the, basically the purpose for the survey. Last Sunday, I got up and showed you a link on the website, and I thought it was a great link, but that's me. The link had given you opportunities to click on a page that would talk about why we're doing the survey. Then there was another link that would actually show you the survey. And then below that link 
was a link to do the survey online. Well, we had a couple of problems. Some people had a hard time logging on to the website, so they couldn't get to it. Some people, when they got to the website, couldn't go to, they got confused as to where that link was to fill it out online. They had to go through all of these other things. And so we've created another link. This is my second try now. <clears throat> and it's the featured post on the website. If you click on that link, you will get directly to the online survey. Okay? Now, why do I think it's important to look at the online? The online survey, people that have taken it have expressed to me that it was relatively easy and simple to do. You have to do it in one sitting, but it's not that long. And the beauty of it is if you make a mistake, the computer is, if you forget to do a question, let's say, and you hit next, the computer will not allow you to go to next. And you'll see in little red print above, you didn't answer this one question, so you need to go back. Why is that important? Well, if you do it with a hard copy, and the copy is anonymous, and you don't fill out, when we try to enter that data, there's going to be a question missing. We can't enter it. And that invalidates, basically, your input in that particular thing. So we want to hear from you, and we don't want to have to throw things out that we can't use, because we don't know who you are to correct that. One of the ways that we can help eliminate that problem, because some people don't want to do it online, and I totally understand that. <clears throat> when you bring it in, uh, if you bring it into the office, we'll have Lorna just check it. There's a couple of questions in there that are sort of easy ones to kind of mess up on. And we can very quickly check to see if you filled everything out and you've addressed that particular question, and then it remains anonymous, and, and, and um, we can go from there. There's another issue that people have had is who in a household should fill it out? Do both members of the household fill it out, or does just one member? Well, it's somewhat complicated from the standpoint. There is a section on the survey called Household, and we want one member of that household to fill out that particular section only. We don't want everybody in the household filling out that data. But basically, all members of the household fill out the rest of the, of the, of the survey. And finally, I really appreciate the calls that I've received where people have had difficulty in terms of getting online or getting to the survey or whatever. Um, if you call me directly, perfect. If you call the church office and talk to the secretary, she will contact me, and I will get back in touch with you, and together we can get it done. But we really appreciate your willingness to do it. Uh, we apologize for the survey being long, but these are the questions that we need to be aware of and have your input if we are able to um, get a strategic plan that is going to be, uh, basically fit our needs uh, for the future. So thank you for those who have filled it out already. Thank you for those who haven't but are considering it. We really need your input. Thank you. I'm going to invite you to join with me in the greeting as printed on the screen, if you would. And if you'd follow where you see the bold print. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Our hymns of praise this morning are holy ground. And rejoice ye here in the heart, it'll be here, but also you see the pages noted in the hymnal.
we're going to do, we're going to wait on the children's moments next time because it's a two-parter and she didn't want to start without the kids. So. so instead we'll go right to our scripture. Earl, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, our readings this morning are from 1 Peter 2, 2 through 10, and John 14, 1 through 14. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone through rejected by mortals, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. This honor then is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you who are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. John 14, 1 through 14, the New Revised Standard Version. Jesus, the way to the Father, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, uh, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way be to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, <clears throat> Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works themselves. Verily, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it.
part of the work I've been doing with the University of Dubuque Theological Seminary has involved working with a spiritual advisor. Now, I've been a pastor a long time, 30, almost four years, and I never had one before. So it's been quite a remarkable experience, and I've learned quite a bit about that. And one thing I learned is, is that in my experience growing up a lot in the Christian church, I never really was taught very much about what it means to be a spiritual person, to participate in spiritual disciplines. I just took it for granted. You know, we pray on Sundays, we sing songs, we engage in the, the ways of grace. But what does it really mean to be a spiritual person? And I finished reading a paper assigned to me uh, in that regard, and it talked about how come Protestants have a little harder time dealing with spiritual issues. And it pointed out Roman Catholics, Episcopalians, some of the Orthodox churches do a much better job than we have. And why it goes back to the story of the Reformation won't go there today. But it indicated some things that I think are worth hearing and our reading today from First Peter really shows us why it matters. So in First Peter, what we read is beginning. It, it, it tells us that we should first begin by putting away all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. You know, that takes a little work in our day and age to clear our minds of such things. We have to take time and clear our minds and not just be quiet just to be quiet, but to be quiet with a purpose, to quiet one's heart and soul and mind, to open oneself for the Spirit. So that takes a while. Now, it's interesting, in one of the spiritual disciplines I use, it, it gives me a two-minute time to do that. Well, two minutes doesn't necessarily do it, and sometimes it's more than enough. But the important thing is, is to clear our minds, to set aside what's going on in our lives, what we're upset about. And I mean, there's plenty to be upset about on any given day, isn't there? Just watch the news. It takes me a long time to clear that out in order to clear my mind. And then it says, like newborn infants, Peter writes, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Tasting the Lord as being good is an Old Testament understanding. And it means the fullness of self, and the, you know, to experience God and know God is good. So like newborn infants, and you know, having watched five kids uh, be infants, and seeing them definitely desiring that newborn milk uh, and, and desiring it and needing it to grow and to, and to grow into the children they would become and then the adults. It's clear what Peter is trying to say here. We need nourishment. We need to be well-nourished in our spirit. Now, it requires us to understand humanity a little different than what perhaps we have been raised in to seeing. If, if Most of us, I'm sure, we've grown up during the time, in fact, we all have, when the, the idea was is to be realistic and rational. The human body at one time uh, was thought to be very much like a machine that needed care and maintenance and proper uh, uh, nourishment, in this case, or feeding of fuel. And we began to look a lot at the physical, a lot at the physical, and we still do today. Uh, there's a great deal of, of things we need to stay active doing to keep ourselves in good health. And, and we've learned that, I think, relatively well. Most of us hear it at least all the time. And every time I see my doctor, he reminds me of them. And I'm sure yours does the same. Taking care of the physical part of us is very important. And we've got that message. And we've found in our society recently the issues related to our mental self as well, our mental health. We're seeing a crisis, we're told right now in our nation, of loneliness that leads to, essentially, difficulties with our mental health. People suffer, and, and they suffer severely from loneliness. Now, that some of which, some of which they think is due to COVID, but that, that may be getting a little of a, an old uh, excuse, I think, I think it's also because of how we've changed. We used to be people that spent a lot of time outdoors. Now we spend a lot of time indoors, watching our TVs, looking at our smartphones, 
watching our talking our life through our computers. We became separated in many ways because of technology, and that's very helpful in one way, but also detrimental in another. And we're seeing an increase in, in issues related to mental health, and this is, of course, Mental Health Month. So we need to be aware of that. We need to take care of our mental health, too. So our physical self, our mental self, we need to be aware of it. We need to be able to get out and see people and talk to people, engage in conversation face-to-face. -face. Because really, I do a lot of work on the computer, a lot of meetings. They've never been the same as when I've sat in the same room and talked with people. So that's another part of who we are we need to pay attention to. But rarely do people talk about the third aspect of human nature, and that is our spiritual nature. That, like both of the others, needs attention, desperately needs attention. And like the former, uh, it also is in crisis in our nation today. We have never seen in the time since this country was founded such a problem with spiritual health as we're seeing right now. And the, the way, and, and the thing about it, as they discovered through holistic medicine, through uh, positive uh, psychology, what has been discovered is it, we need to tend to all three of that parts of who we are. Otherwise, the others will suffer as well. So if you are a spiritually alive and healthy person, but you're suffering in your physical health, that's going to affect your spiritual life and your mental health. And it's true with all the others. In any area or combination of those areas, if we are suffering, we will suffer in all aspects of who we are. So we need to tend to our physical health. We have to pay attention to what our doctors tell us, what the nutritional things are. Yes, that's true. And we need to pay attention to our mental health as well. We need to get out and talk to people. We need, if we have difficulties, talk to somebody about that. We, we have to do that for our own good and for the good of our families and our community. But we also need to pay attention to our spiritual health and nourish it. And how do we go about doing that? How do you nourish your spiritual life? Well, we have learned over many, many, many generations that people find that most often uh, to be a benefit is just to silence yourself. You know, we don't listen very well. We don't listen very well at all. And, and because of that, we have a tendency not to be able to hear what God says to us because we have got our minds so cluttered up with all of these sorts of things. So to quiet our minds means not so much to think about what God needs to hear from us, but perhaps to think more about what we need to hear from God. Some people in the, uh, in the tradition of spiritual practices have said, you know, when, when, what do we need to do? Well, we need to listen to God. Well, how do you know that he's listening to you? Well, you just have to trust that. And listen all the more. Where words fail, the Spirit comes into our lives and speaks on our behalf to God. That's scriptural. So what do we do? You know, is it, is it a matter of just taking a few times a day and sitting down and doing some sort of spiritual practice? That might be all it is that you need to do if that works for you. And there are multiple, multiple forms of spiritual practice. But it needs to be more than that. If you just do something to do it, if you just perform a certain ritual because that's part of your ritual, it may be all that becomes for you. You need to find something that is deeply, deeply meaningful to you. Now, some denominations have provided means and people have grown up with those means and that's what they use and it's been very meaningful to them. But as I mentioned earlier, at least in my experience, uh, that hasn't been the case. I was never really taught much about how to pray. I wasn't taught much about how to, to experience God in this way. Just as the article indicated, there's good reason for that. But I want to encourage us today. So why? Why did Peter think this was so very important? It's because he believed and wrote that we need to grow in our relationship with God 
he speaks about it as becoming like a stone. Now he uses that, which is really appropriate, since Peter's name literally means like small stones or gravel. But And you recall that Jesus had said to Peter upon this rock, his proclamation, I will build my church. So he's using that metaphor, and he's using a cornerstone. Now, cornerstone stones were always laid because it was that set the direction of the entire building. When a cornerstone was put in place, it wasn't just ceremonial as it is today. It was put in place to get the angle and direction of all the rest of the building. And everything would be built upon that cornerstone. It was the location that was all of where the building stood and began. And that, Peter tells us, is Jesus Christ. But he says, you fill in your place. You become like a living stone as you grow in your relationship with God, as you grow in your spiritual life, as you become more uh, accustomed to tasting that God is good. You become a stone in that edifice that God, Jesus is building in this world, his literal church, living stones built into a spiritual house. He goes on to call it a holy priesthood, and Martin Luther picked that up. If, if you have a Lutheran tradition, you know he picked that up, and it became part of the, of the Reformation period time where all people were seen to be in a holy priesthood. Then those things that we do, spiritual sacrifices, which are spiritual practices, I would suppose, become acceptable to God. And it and, and goes on and he reads about, and we hear about how that stone, Jesus was rejected by society, but clearly used of God to build for us a spiritual household to which we become a part. It doesn't matter what denomination you are. It's a part of a church that Jesus Christ is building in this world and has been building and continues to build now for over 2,000 years. So think about the holistic approach to your life. Think about taking care of your physical self as best as you're able. We all, you know, fall down in that process and get up and try again. Think about the importance of your mental health. Don't just take it for, uh, you know, uh, for granted that everything is fine. If you're feeling anxious or uncomfortable or you're feeling like, you know, the, the world is just spinning out of control and you're feeling lost, talk to somebody about that. You might find out a lot of us think this world is a little bit crazy right now. Then it isn't you or me. And then pay special attention because we have been so negligent in doing so in your spiritual life. Be nourished by God for God wishes to nourish us, wishes to feed us so that we can grow in strength so that we can face the world that we live in holistically strong for this is how God has made us this we know because the scriptures speak to it but we hear it here in Peter's words put away all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy all slander and search out that sustaining spiritual milk for indeed that would will, will be that allows us to grow and grow ever stronger and become a part of that magnificent church, that spiritual church, built by no less than our Lord Jesus Christ, on which it stands, on which it must stand, or it will certainly fall. In Jesus' name, amen. If you join me in singing Only Trust Him, 337 in the hymnal.
rejoicing concerns today, I would just encourage you again to look into the bulletin and see those listed there uh, and keep un, you know, mindful of them. I would tell you about Kip Burlow, uh, that's Lynn and Louie's son. As many of you know, he had surgery to remove a large portion of his tongue, a little over half of it, uh, because of cancer. That surgery went very well, but uh, afterwards they, you know, they had all of the material out, tested everything, looked good, but they decided to err on caution, so he will be needing radiation treatment for about five weeks, five days a week for five weeks. So please keep, keep, keep in your prayers. There is going to be a, and it'll be listed, I don't know if it's in there now, but it will be soon, uh, a fundraiser for them, a, a chicken dinner somewhere that will raise money for him. Uh, and it, but if you care to make any donations, he's losing a lot of income and he has to continue to care for his children and so forth. So if anybody cares to donate to that, uh, you can do so through the church. Just indicate it's for Kip Merlot benefit and that will find its way there. Um, the flowers that are here today are from uh, Mabel and Norm Watkins in memory of their daughter, Lisa, whose memorial service was here yesterday. Lisa was only 54 years old. Uh, she had suffered a fall. She had had surgery in her ankles and was home, lived alone and took a fall and hit her head and it had killed her in the fall. And so we had her memorial service here yesterday and so these flowers are here uh, to remind us to keep them in our prayers. So I will just have a, a prayer and just give the Lord what's in your heart. You know, you can listen to me or have your own prayer as we lift them before God. May we pray. Merciful and loving God, life is full of things that sometimes surprise us. Good things and sometimes terrible things and sometimes tragic things. Life is like that. And somehow we, you know, take the highs and enjoy them and go on our way and smile. And sometimes those terrible and even tragic things, well, they take a lot longer, God. But we know that you go with us, that you are there to support us, to help us find a way. When we don't think there's a way, you will find one. When we fall down, you will help pick us back up. You, O oh God, sometimes have to carry us, for we can't even so much as walk. But always, always you are with us, blessing us, loving us, speaking to us. If only we could quiet ourselves sufficiently to hear you. For your voice indeed, as the prophets testified to, is a small, small, silent voice. But a voice that once heard speaks loudly, speaks loudly in our hearts and our souls, and gives us strength. So thank you, God, for your presence in our lives. We pray for those mentioned, and we pray for those who come to our minds and hearts at this time, whether they're matters for rejoicing or concern or sorrow. We lift them before you, O oh God, and give thanks in Jesus' name that we know you hear us, and we know that you love us, and that you will always keep us. In Jesus' name, amen. And then again, we use, as you know, the, the box back there by the, where you go out into the fellowship hall. If you care to leave an offering today, if you brought one with you, we invite you to do that. May we pray for a moment. Heavenly Father, we offer you thanks. Thanks that we can be together in this place at this time. Sing together, hear the scriptures together, pray together, consider the word together. You have given us a tremendous, tremendous gift in this time that we can be together on these Sunday mornings and other times. You have given us community, a community that loves us and cares for us, that prays for us. And we are part of a greater community that extends outside these doors into the community, into the world of countless millions of those who look to you, who look to your son, Jesus Christ, as Lord. You have told us in, the, in your written word that there is but one God, and we know this is true. But you've also told us there is but one faith, one baptism. And it's the same for all of us who look to Jesus Christ, the good shepherd whose voice goes out into the world calling his own to himself. He doesn't call us by denomination. He doesn't call us by association. He calls us through love. And those who hear his voice find a loving God waiting to embrace them. One who brings to them 
a sense of peace, a sense of identity, a sense of hope. This is your gift to all who seek you. And the incredible thing, God, is we often find that as we go seeking you, we find that you've been looking for us too. Thank you, God, for continuing to look for us. And we thank you, God, that we can come to you in this way. In Jesus' most holy name we pray and offer our thanks. Amen. If you'd sing with me, we'll sing through this twice.
the slide, actually the, in your bulletins, the correct page, it's number 12, if you turn to page 12 in the hymnal. And we begin with the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Would you join with me? Merciful God, we confess that we have... Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now we'll turn to the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father,
The ushers, join me up front, please. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing of the body of Christ. The cup over which we have thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and to work to your praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And I was a little remiss in the opening. I need to mention this very quickly. Sorry to do it right here at the end. But uh, next Saturday, May 13th, is we're having our annual spring cleanup here at the church, and we could use volunteers to come by. We wash the outside windows. We need to do some sweeping out in the parking lot. So if you have one of those big brooms, we'd appreciate. That will run from uh, 9 o'clock to about 1-ish, and we'll have some food here for you too. But if you can drop by during that time and help out, there's some raking we need to do. It's something we do, or try to do every year. It's been a while, but it, so it needs it. So if you can come by next Saturday, uh, 9 o'clock to about 1-ish, like I say, and we'll have some lunch for you. So sorry about I missed that earlier. And now, go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Stop by in Cafe Joy for a while. Still plenty of treats back there and good, good coffee. Thank you, folks. God bless you all.